We continue our series of conversations on the women's vote with political psychologist Martha Burke. Martha is the author of Your Voice, Your Vote, the savvy woman's guide to power politics and the change we need. We're going to focus on pay equity this time. Bottom line, here is one we know. Women frequently get paid less than men for the same job. We have new figures out. Where do women stand? Martha, let's kind of set the table here for this. What are the figures as people understand them now? Well, unfortunately, Jean, women are still making 77 cents on the dollar overall. Mm -hmm. That's for full-time year-round work compared to men working full-time year-round. So it's not a pretty picture. Mm -hmm. It's been stuck here now almost a decade with a variation of one or two points. Mm. But one of the real sad things about it mm -hmm. is that sometimes that pay gap narrows by a penny or two. Mm -hmm. In the last few years, that's been because men have gone down, not because women have come up. So we're stuck. Interesting. What does that mean for a family, that difference? That's almost a quarter, you know, 25% difference there. What does that mean for a head of household if you're a woman with two kids and no other income coming into the family? Well, let, it would take, if women came up to where men are for full-time year-round work, same work, mm -hmm. same skills, effort, and so forth, it would cut poverty by 40%, Gene. That is huge. That is huge. Mm -hmm. Think of that in terms of public services, in, in terms of things like food stamps, in terms of subsidized child care, mm -hmm. uh, the income tax credit that very low income people get, uh, Medicaid. All of those public services would be less burdened if people made more money. You could think of the pay gap and even the low minimum wage as a subsidy for business mm. because the taxpayers are picking up that slack one way or the other. See, I've never heard it expressed like that. Someone's making up that 25% gap, and, and it's us. I'd never heard it's it. It's us. Yeah. It is us, less so than we used to, and we know if Paul Ryan's budget is adopted, the, the Romney-Ryan budget, it'll be even less, mm -hmm. and we're going to see more people on the street. I was talking to a couple that just got back from Greece, mm -hmm. where, as you know, things are very, very tough. The safety net is gone. And they said for the first time since they've been going to Greece every year because the wife is from Greece, they saw people digging for food in the garbage in the daytime. Oh now, do we want a United States like that? I don't think so. The reporting I've seen, these are not, these are middle class people. Yes. In Greece having this happen. So I hear that point loud and clear. In the current, re in the context of the current recession, how impactful is this on pay equity. Are we, are we in a holding spot because of the recession or were we in that holding spot before the recession? We were pretty much in it before the recession. Okay. There's a difference in the pay gap and pay absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now we know, as we've talked about on this show, that the jobs that are coming back don't pay as much as the jobs that were lost. Mm -hmm. But as far as that gap between mm -hmm. women and men, it's about the same whether you're talking about Wall Street, mm -hmm. the very top, or whether you're talking about the very bottom. So the recession has had an effect overall on wages. It's been tougher on women because it's been harder for women to get the jobs back. They have not recovered at the same level men have, although they're coming up. Mm -hmm. But far as the gap, it hasn't made a lot of difference. Hmm. Interesting. Um this comes up all the time. Who can do something about this? And what I mean by that is, uh, is this a problem solved through the White House? We had a Lilly Ledbetter uh, act signed by this president early in his term, first major piece of legislation he signed. So obviously it can come from the White House, but what about Congress? What, who actually is the bottom line to solve this problem? Well, it's everybody, <laughs> and Congress could do something. There's a bill pending right now called the Paycheck Fairness Act mm -hmm. that would beef up enforcement some and help a little bit. Mm -hmm. The President of the United States could actually issue some executive orders, as Bill Richardson did in New Mexico, saying if you want to contract with this state, mm -hmm. you're going to have to tell us how you pay women and how you pay men. He didn't say, here's what you have to pay people. He said, tell us. Mm -hmm. And you know sometimes that sunshine is certainly a good disinfectant, as they imagine. say. And if we yeah. know how women and men are getting paid, even the employers sometimes don't realize what they're doing. So that disclosure would help. Obama could do that at the federal level. He hasn't done it. Uh, I don't think he's even contemplating it. So 
it can be done at the state level, even the city mm -hmm. could do that. Mm -hmm. So that could happen. As far as a bigger picture, believe it or not, raising the minimum wage would help close the pay gap. Tell, tell how, because there's something happening. Of course, locally, we've got it here up for vote in uh, Albuquerque as a city. But I watched an interview with Ralph Nader some months ago. He felt like the federal issue was winnable in this current climate. Would you agree with that? I you think it would be winnable if the president got behind it, really got behind it, I do, because a lot of people know now with this recession what 50 cents an hour can sure. mean down at that level. And what would that mean for women if the minimum wage rose? Well, it would mean a lot because women are, adult women, mm -hmm are the major group in the, that are making the minimum wage, 60 some odd percent, the high 60s, are adult women. People think it's teenagers, gas money, no, it's not. Right. It's adult women. So that would help close the pay gap because women are so disproportionately down at that rung. Sure. So when you hear people say that it's, uh, the minimum wage classically is not meant to be lived on, how does that hit you when you think about women who are working with the minimum wage, that, that high 60%? What, what does that actually say to you? Well, what it says to me is they think, okay, if we can't live on the minimum wage with one job, go get two or even three. And if, if people who are saying that actually had to live it, I don't think they'd say it. But Gene, there are a lot of people working more than one minimum wage job because you can't really live on it. Interesting. We'll leave that there. Martha Burke, thank you once again. We'll see you for the next one. Always good.